Welcome back, sewists. We're gonna work on another folkwear pattern today. First, let's do a fit check. I'll put a picture up here of the title card. This is the Bondi T. It's a PDF pattern. And this is a super cute romper that is, I believe, McCall's. I should have looked that up beforehand, but I'll put a picture of the title card up here. They'll all link, be linked down below for you. And let me show you today's project. Now, I will confess, scrolling through Instagram, this was actually one that came up. I followed the folkwear um, account and they were doing a sale and this was one of the ones that was on sale. It is the pinafore dress, just a little A-line dress with big patch pockets. It has little straps that button on. You could definitely wear a t-shirt like this under it or a turtleneck. So this is what we're going to work on. It comes multi-sized. This one's extra small to 3XL and I always preserve all my sizes. This is definitely one that someone else might want or I might change sizes, which definitely happens. So I trace it off. I went shopping in my stash. I bought this fabric for another project. It is a nice soft cotton. I've already pre-shrank it. It's been pre-washed and dried. This is what I'm going to make the pinafore out of. I think it's super cute. A uh, blue chambray. It almost looks like a shirting fabric the way it's, it's a very plain weave. Besides interfacing, you also need two buttons. So I also went shopping in my stash. Let me show you the buttons. Here's my adorable fabric. Look at all the little sweet daisies on it. There's my thread and see, you can't even see that thread on there. And then I went to my stash. I already owned these. I think they may be too big, but I have two of them. You just need two. So I pulled them out to see. I'm gonna actually wait until I have the strap on and lay the strap down to decide, I think. So I have those. These are slightly creamier, but look really cute. I have these just a little bit smaller in white. And then I do have, I bought these and I don't know why, but they match perfectly. And I have a whole bunch of those, so I could do this. My concern about this one is it's gonna look a little too sweet, a little too um, like for a little girl, but I think they're adorable and definitely go. So I'll lay them on there and decide um, at the very end. That's probably one of the very last things we're gonna do. So let's get cutting out. Let me just tell you a little behind the scenes thing that I often do. I have a cute little basket and I put my project in it. So I'll have my pattern. I often will put pattern pieces, especially if I cut out one day and sew the next or then the next week even. Um, I have all my buttons that I chose down here, my thread, that sort of thing. And I keep it all in a little basket and I can carry it from cutting station to sewing station to ironing board or whatever. And I just keep all my pieces together. It helps me because I am a notorious for either dropping a piece or just laying it somewhere absentmindedly and then spending the next 20 minutes trying to figure out where I laid it. So this is Stacy's attempt at not dithering for 20 minutes over a missing neckline or something. Anyway, there's my cute little basket and see it looks like lace. Just makes me happier when they're cute. Let's cut thing. I think I'm gonna go ahead and just cut my interfacing. It's just these pieces. So we've got a pocket band is what they call it, but it's like a pocket facing. We have our shoulder straps. We have two of the facings for the front and back. This pattern has one piece is the same front and back. Very easy. And then we have these giganto patch pockets. As I was picking this out, I was thinking it would be so cute to add like an eyelet lace to this or a gingham check. You could easily do a little uh, mixing of fabrics. I really originally thought about doing just a plain chambray with like a gingham check band and a gingham check pocket, or maybe a little piping of gingham check on the chambray, something like that. It's so easy to zhuzh up a simple little design like this and make it look special and bespoke. I'm telling everyone, I'm putting my phone in the basket with my buttons and things. When I can't find it in five minutes, that's where it is. Okay, so I'm sitting here dithering. Do I just scrap this completely and pick a new fabric? Or do I do this cheater method and make the same garment, but it will be a lot less full? Like I'm going to lose front and back like eight inches at the hem, which is like 16 inches of that A-line and how it hangs. I will say that on my body, it might actually be a little more flattering to have a little less fullness at the hem. So I'm, I am vacillating. I'm going back and forth, back and forth. What should I do? I really want it out of something like this. I have other fabric that will fit, 
because I really love this fabric too and I don't want to cut it all up and then be like, oh, I hate it. Back in a minute. I'm laying out just, I'm not even ready to pin down or anything. I'm just making sure it'll fit in the pattern piece and it does not. So here is my pattern piece. I cut out the extra large and you can see that if I want it to fit on the fabric, I have to lose this much down the center front. Now this is a thing you can do. You can swing it on the center front. What that does is it keeps your center front on grain, but you lose width or dimension um, to the side. So I measured my body. It still will fit me according to the tape measure. However, you lose all of this fullness in the A-line, which is why it's important to do the 60 inch if you're larger than the extra small. I think the extra small was the only one that it suggested out of 45, and this is why. Okay, so I'm going with it. <clears throat> Let me show you what I've done. I have folded back on itself. So here you can see I have a fold. There's the fold, and then I flipped it back. Now you can only do that if you have a non-directional, non-nap fabric, which I do. So I can, instead of laying out this big pattern piece and cutting it twice, I can only cut one time, but get both pieces out. I need four straps, and I have four layers, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut the straps. Then I'm just gonna slide this down, and I'm going to cut out um, my pocket band. I just need two pocket bands, two pockets, and the little neckline facing. So phase one of cutting. Okay, I cut my little pocket bands just out of a scrap that was left over from the top. I'm finishing cutting my um, neck facings here for the top for the top of the front and the back. And then all that's left are these giganto patch pockets that I'll probably put like right here, get those done. And then I have this much left over and I like this so much, I might end up making like a little um, button down top or something out of it because it's just so cute. And I'm on to interfacing. Interfacing's not, uh, if you're doing this kind where it's, it's like the felted kind where it's just, it doesn't have a grain line. So you can lay any way you need to, to get it out. I've got a scrap here. I'm gonna get one front and a pocket facing, and then I'm gonna refold it for straps and I'll probably have to cut off a new piece for my other um, neckline facing. We're ready to start working on our project. It's just a front and back. And the very first thing they have us do is the pocket. They did not, it looks like they didn't have us cut interfacing for the pocket, but I did and I recommend doing that. It always makes the pocket lay nicer. You just don't get that wibbly wobbly um, top edge of the pocket. It just gives you a nice crisp pocket. So I'm gonna interface the top of my pocket, but what I'm actually going to do is interface everything. I always do this when I sew, I do prep work. Lots of things that you can do before you ever start assembling the garment. And the first thing I always do is put interfacing on all the pieces that need interfacing all at once. It actually makes the project go faster. It actually also lets you sit and sew, which is the fun part of sewing, continuously. You're not like sewing, stopping, doing something else. Now, if you, it depends on how you like sew and how your brain works. I personally like to sort of have continuous, uninterrupted patterns of things. You may need to chop things up. So do it, whatever works best for you, but that's what I'm going to do. So let's head over, interface all of the things that need interfaced. I am going to do my pocket, um, my pocket band, which is really a pocket facing. I am going to interface it. They don't recommend it, but that's up to us. We get to choose that. Um, I also think I might show you a little interfacing trick. We're going to do the interfacing trick before we even press anything. Let me show you something. Oh, one more thing. This is going to be a no serger project, completely done on the sewing machine this week. So we're going to be turning up a portion of our little facing so that we can self-finish this. It's the way we're going to hem off this um, back of the pocket to make it all nice and neat. There's a fun little trick you can do. So I'm going to take my two pocket facing pieces, and you can do this for lots of things. I'm gonna take my two pocket face pieces, I'm, going, I'm laying them right side up, and then I'm putting the interfacing right side to it. So I have wrong side, I can feel the glue here. So I have right sides together, interfacing to pocket facing. And I'm going to now sew this little edge at a quarter of an inch. So we're gonna sew this bottom edge a quarter inch for both of these. Then I'm going to turn it and press it. And it will 
automatically finish that edge off. And then when I go back to later to sew it, it's all sealed inside. I'm, it's the neatest trick. I'm just set for a straight stitch. The whole garment is gonna be done with a straight stitch. No zigzagging needed. And I've got my quarter inch foot on. I'm just gonna sew my quarter inch all the way down on one side of this, back stitch at each end, and I'll meet you over at the ironing board. I'm gonna do it for both of them. All right, set up at a quarter inch. I'm just gonna stitch down, back stitch, straight stitching. Here's one already done. I'm gonna go ahead and do this for the neck facings also, this, because we are going to be hemming it. So I'm doing all of this preliminary um, before I iron or anything. This is all my pre-work and it'll make sense to you when we head, head over to the ironing board. I have sewn on my interfacing to my facing pieces. This is the glue side. So you can, this is the wrong side. So you can see I can push this open and turn this over. And now when I carefully press this, it's pressing up the hem for me too. And I'm gonna do that for all of these. On the neckline face, on the neck facing, clip these little inner corners so it turns right. So let me flip these around. I need two hands for that and I'll show you how it looks. So I have turned it up and pressed it. And this is how it looks. So you can see how it all automatically finishes off that edge for me. Now, when I go to sew this later, it just makes this easy. Like it just takes care of that hemline. This is gonna be on the inside of the pocket where it won't be seen, but you can see how easily that hems up and finishes off that edge. This will be top stitch from the other side, um, but it also just creates a nice, perfect finished edge. I just love this little trick. We're now ready to actually start sewing. So we have done this and I have applied interfacing. So this is how it looks. Make sure when you do this that you end up with the right and the left. I've pinned them onto my pockets. And now we're just going to sew, this has half inch seam allowance. So we're gonna sew half inch around the top of this. And then we can turn and flip and top stitch it. So we're gonna do that. And when I go to press and I'll show you, I'm gonna press under all of my seam allowances um, after I get this stitched so that it'll be really easy to sew it on. We're gonna also need to make sure that we transfer our pocket markings so we know where to line these up on our garment. You only need to transfer the pocket markings to one of the skirt, one of the dress panels. We're not putting pockets in front and back, we're only putting them in the front. All right, now that we have sewn these on, this is how it looks. I am trimming out these corners so that when I flip this, I can get a nice sharp corner. So we're gonna trim our corners off. If you need to, you can even kind of trim this way a little bit more. Um, this one in particular, I think I'm gonna trim a little deeper. Okay, so now I've trimmed it a little deeper because this is such a sharp angle, you need a little more trimmed out to get that um, sharp corner. Make sure you don't get your threads, you get close to, up to, but not through um, your stitching lines. Okay, let's flip it around and press it. Here are our pockets on the inside, so I've pressed everything down. I'm gonna now go to the sewing machine and I'm going to top stitch this edge on both pockets so the pockets are ready. I have pulled my um, dress pieces out and I have marked my little markings so you can see the little yellow line. That's where my pockets are gonna line up in a minute. So let's get these top stitched. So here's one pocket top stitched and you can see because I did this little trick, it makes it a little easier to um, keep everything in place and stitch it. Also because of the interfacing, it makes it lay nice and flat. So I'm gonna give this one more press up here and then we'll be ready to pin these on. I'm gonna stitch this one too. Let me say I did not serge in here and normally I do. They don't show any seam finishing. I'm doing it, um, but I'm, I'm just gonna leave it how it is. I will tell you that I find that you do get some strings inside your pocket. So if you'd like to serge these off or zigzag them first, um, do it because then you won't have little strings. Otherwise, it shouldn't fray too badly um, in the wash because it's co completely enclosed. It's more like pulling your phone or things that you put in your pocket in and out where you might get some fraying. All right, so I've got my pocket and my little markings and I'm just lining up those two little edges, those little points. Each point has a spot, so I'm gonna line those up and then pin down. Everything else is pressed under and I'm just gonna top stitch around. They're pinned on. I'm ready to just stitch around, I pin both of them on. I'm gonna give this a press. You can see how it pulls slightly and that will be taken care of when I press it. That's just from being stitched 
with the interfacing on the inside. Um, I'm going to stitch around close to this edge and then I'll probably do the little triangle or something up there at the top to make sure that our pockets are nice and secure because I use my pockets and they do get a lot of stress. So let's top stitch these pockets on. So I'm going to freehand a little triangle at the top of this. I'm going to hold down my thread, sink my needle. I want to do a little triangle at the top because it just makes it a little sturdier. Now, it's kind of bunchy in here with all of this, but it works. Ouch, just stabbed myself. All right. I should have started on the other side of the pocket. I wasn't paying attention. But that makes a little, um, a little triangle at the top and it makes it just a little sturdier. And now I'm ready just to stitch around. When I get to the other side of this pocket, I will finish the triangle. <laughs> we have pockets oh they're cute I'm gonna press this really well now and we're going to go ahead and do our um, shoulder straps our little straps so I have interfaced two of the four straps and we're going to just right side together one interfaced one not interfaced and we're going to stitch around on three sides leaving one of the short ends open to turn it through um, and that's the, that end is the one that's going to get sewn in the back inside the little facing so we don't even have to really worry about finishing it or do anything else with it. And I'm pretty sure this has half inch seam allowance all the way around so we're just going to do this quick stitch half inch around. When you have one piece interfaced and one piece not interfaced, put the interfacing on top and um, there will, it's more stable and there will be less of movement, less of an issue between your layers if you do that. If you're struggling with your seam allowance, you can actually pencil it right on there. Draw with a fine line pencil your seam allowance on your piece if you need to. If you're a new sewist, if that helps you, do it. We have our straps. We're going to come in up here on these little corners and we're going to cut them off like we did on our pocket. We're going to give those a little trim so that the corners turn nice. Up to but not through. Looks something like that. And now we're going to head over and give everything a quick press before we move on. For turning our little shoulder straps, I am trimming out some of the seam allowance on the interfaced side, it just makes it turn a little easier, makes it less bulky, and then I'm giving it a press. So this is how it looks trimmed, and this is how it looks turned. All right, friends, pockets are on, straps are made. We're gonna now go to the back, which is the one without pockets, and we're going to baste on or just do a little stitch on our little uh, straps. I have pinned them so that the interfacing side is the one that is, um, I'm gonna consider the right side and that's the one that's against the garment. You wanna move over a half an inch. You want to be just next to your stitching line here. And then we're just gonna just do a little stitch just to tack it down and hold it for both straps. And then we'll be ready to do our side seams. All right, so I have a front and a back. The back has little straps on it. The front has the pockets, and now we're ready to do side seams. Now they just say, sew the side seam, press it open. If you want to serge those edges first, you can do that. I'm not serging anything on this, this go round. So you can either do a French seam or mock French seam would be the easiest. I'm going to do a French seam. The thing with the French seam is normally you do right sides together when you start, but with a French seam, you do wrong sides together. It's a, um, stitch, a turn and stitch seam. So I'm actually going to line these up wrong sides together. If you don't want to do a French seam, no worries. Just do your regular seam. You can zigzag those edges. You can do the mock French where you 
put right sides together, sew your half inch, then turn in the raw edges to each other and stitch those down. I have um, a couple videos on how to do French and mock French seams, so if you'd like to see how to do those self-enclosed seams, I will have links to those down below. Um, if you want to do that, go ahead. So I'm going to go ahead real quick and uh, do this. The, the way this works, though, is you make your narrow seam, both sides, turn it inside out, press it, and then stitch again. So you're, I'm not stitching an original half inch seam. I'm not going to do a lot of explaining because I have a whole video on it. It's short, it's easy to understand. So if you're real interested in that, I would just run over there and look at it real quick and then come back and continue sewing. So I'm just going to pin my side seams together and get these made. Once the side seams are done, we're ready to work on facings and we're almost done. Like this is not a super complicated, I really like it, super easy. I'm pretty excited, even though I made this narrower, which I think is actually going to be a little more flattering for me. I think it's great. Okay, I'm going to be here sewing for a few minutes while I get these self-enclosed seams done, and then we'll meet back to do facings. See you in a minute. So this is how a French seam looks on the inside. You can see it's completely self-enclosed. And on the right side, it just looks like a regular seam. I love a good self-enclosed seam like this. Beautiful. Another thing I've done, I've got our straps on, is I've gone ahead and just sewn my tag on the back um, facing. So this, where this tag is, I will be putting on the back side and then the front facing looks exactly the same, but without the tag. All right, we have our side seams done. Our little straps are on, our pockets are on, our straps, our facings are interfaced. It has us go ahead and do our side seam now. Now, if you chose to do this same little trick that I just did, you can, if you want to, you can actually pull it apart a little bit. It'll pull apart real easy. And we're gonna sew that um, first, just on this little corner, and then we'll fix this, I'll show you. Okay, so this is how it looks. I've just sewn that together. The rest of the interfacing is still on. So now let's address this wonky little pointy part right here. We are tucking up that little corner right at the corner and we're pressing open that seam. I'm just doing it with my fingers. And then we're going to tuck over one side of the interfacing. Whoops, make sure that little, those little points stay in there. Tuck over one side of the interfacing and the other side of the interfacing. And then can you see how that's sort of sealed now? I can give this a quick press and it looks like that, and it finishes off that corner. If you want to, you can trim off a little bit of this corner here too, like you can trim out a little bit of that, make it a little smoother in there, which is what I'm gonna do. Here is the inside, all pressed, of my little facing. This is how it looks, and now I'm ready to pin it on and sew around the neckline here first, and then we'll flip it and we'll top stitch at, along this bottom edge and get everything finished off. If you want to, you could easily come in and like top stitch right along this seam line here and that would hold all these down if you need to. Um, but I'm just gonna leave it like that. We're gonna pin it on now. Okay, so we are at the point now where we've sewn together our facing and we're getting it um, pinned on. And this is how it looks. So here's the inside, here's the right side. So right sides together for the facing. The back, which is where I have my tag, and the straps are also in the back. So the straps are getting sandwiched between the dress and the facing. And so it's just, it fits beautifully, fits all the way around. And now we're just going to stitch it. I'm going to stitch it with the interfacing side up and that will ease in any difference between the firmness of the interfacing and the softness of the garment. And we're ready to go around it half an inch. It's not very exciting, but this is how it looks. We just start somewhere in the back doesn't matter so much because it's getting flipped around, but that's what I'm doing. I'm starting in the center back neckline here, and I'm just going to do my half inch stitching. You're going to be stitching in a circle. Eventually, you'll come back around um, where you started. sewn all the way around. 
we have a facing on. So now I'm going to come in. I'm going to first of all make sure I don't have any little foldovers or buckles. I'm going to check it out because this is going to show, show, show if we do. And make sure everything looks lined up and appropriate. I'm going to trim out my little corners like we've done before up here these at the top of the bib. I'm going to clip at this point so that it opens up so it will flip properly and if I need to I might see this is nice and curvy I might do a couple little clips in here also for the same reason then this whole thing is just going to get pressed around to the other side and just like we did with the pocket once we flip it we're going to top stitch around close to the edge of this facing but you want to be stitching on the right side of the garment not the facing side when you do it all right so all those things I'm going to get done not a lot to that. It's pretty straightforward. It's one of those where it takes more to say it than it does to do it, just about. All right, all that's done. We're ready to now just turn and press. So I'm gonna go give it a press and I'll meet you back over here for top stitching. All that's left after this is the buttonhole and button and the hemline. And they go ahead and do the buttonhole and button next. Doesn't matter to me, honestly. After that, we're hemming. Okay, this is going so fast. I'm gonna be done in time for lunch. Okay, friends, I flipped it to the inside and pressed it. So this is what the inside looks like. And this is the outside, this is the back. I'm going to start down here um, at a side seam. And can you see those little poles? It was pulling and so I did a little more clipping in there and that took care of it. So I'm going to now start down here at the side seam and do my top stitching. We're going to get close to the edge of this band down here. Um, so it's going to look a lot like our pocket, sort of a deep stitch like that. It'll look super cute. And we're just going to go all the way around. Here's our front with our little pockets. Here is our facing top stitched around. See how nice and neat that looks and with that interfacing used as um, as a way to seal in the hem it makes it really smooth so here's how that looks all ready to go now the next thing the directions have us do oops I got water on my iron um, is the buttonhole but I'm gonna do it last because on my machine I have to change out the foot and settings or the settings it automatically does but um, I don't want to do that. I want to just keep sewing my straight stitch and then the last thing I'll do will be my buttonhole and button. So we're gonna come down and hem now. To do that, the first thing I'm going to do is just turn up a quarter inch all the way around and press it. If you want to, you can also stitch it because it's gonna be on the inside and then we're gonna fold up the rest of the hem and press that and then we'll top stitch around on the outside. So the hem, they have you press under a quarter of an inch and then fold up again a half an inch. So that's what we're going to do. All right, the hem is all pressed in and see how that looks. And so now I'm going to just take it to the machine. I've always started a side seam on something like this. And because I have 5 8 inch turned up, I can't stitch at the 5 8 I can do sort of between five and a half, or I can do a half and go all the way around top stitching and the hem will be in and we're ready for buttonhole. So this is how the hem looks on the right side and the wrong side. And you can see it catches it completely so there will be no fraying. We are hemmed. That looks so pretty. I think that's lovely. So now, all that's left is our buttonhole and our button. I'm gonna grab my buttons here real quick. I think I know which button I'm gonna use. Though I think this would be so cute. I just think it's a little juvenile. I think it looks a little young, a little sweet, a little twee. So I don't think I'm gonna do that. I think I'm just gonna go with a plain white. I'm gonna look at the size on my, I got my, 
I got my strap all wet. I put water in my iron and uh, dripped on the, on the ironing board and dragged my strap through it. So the way we're going to do the buttonhole is up and down through the middle. And because of that, I can go pretty big on the button, though I don't think I want like Mickey Mouse looking buttons on the front. So I think this is the size I'm going to go for. When marking your buttonholes, you want to make sure that like if you start too far down when the button is buttoned, it will actually look like it's hanging off the strap. So you want to make sure that you start far enough up that at the bottom of the buttonhole, the button is completely on a strap that it's not going to look like it's hanging off. So let's switch feet. I'm going to go to my machine. I'm not doing a buttonhole lesson because that is so machine specific. So I'm just going to choose my buttonhole and then I'm going to choose my buttonhole foot, which is hiding back here behind my giant cup. That I did. If you don't follow me on Instagram, I did an Instagram Hobby Lobby haul a while back and I do things like that. So if you don't follow me on Instagram, you might go check it out. There is a link to that um, in my um, description below. And I also show, if you're a little more interested in the behind the scenes things, I show like the outfits I wear. Sometimes um, I show some things about um, my, fri my fun Fridays with mom um, and a few things like that. So, and some behind the scene things, some of our gardening, other things. So you might check that out. Okay, let's do a buttonhole. I'm going to mark my buttonhole on here real quick. Your buttonhole length should be the length, however um, wide your button is, plus how deep your button is. That's how long a buttonhole should be. Um, if you have a one inch button and it's an eighth of an inch deep, you need a one and an eighth inch long buttonhole. Otherwise, your button is going to really struggle going through. So my sewing machine, once I've done the first buttonhole, it memorizes it. And that's it. I don't have to do it again. Make sure I get this right in the middle. I do not want that off for certain. Now you can definitely do this. I'm doing this all with pins, but you don't have to. You could do this with, um, you can mark it all with pencil or with your chalk or something like that. All right, this is where I want to start. And we're ready to go. So I have one beautiful buttonhole. Make sure when you're buttonholing that you are doing it on the right side, not the wrong side. Make sure you get it on the correct side because there is a big difference on a buttonhole from right, from right side to wrong side. Now this one, now that it's memorized, all I have to do is tell it where to start and we're good. And this time I'll film a close up for you. All that's left now is to cut open these buttonholes and sew on our buttons. And then I'm going to try it on and we're going to see if I regret going ahead and cutting it out of 45 inch wide fabric instead of 60 because it's going to be a lot narrower. I'm going to go ahead and sew on the button and uh, open up my buttonholes and I will see you in a minute to try it on. I was very concerned about removing as much as I did. Remember how I slid it over at the center front and center back so that it would fit on my 45 inch wide fabric. And I thought, I'm just gonna go with it because the tape measure said it would fit. And it's so cute. I have no regrets. It looks great. What do you think? Pretty cute. Now I normally don't like a patch pocket um, because they add to the fullness of the hip line and I already have a plenty full hip line, but because of the type of fabric this is, the pocket disappears a little bit more and I think that's stinking cute. The length is just above the ankle. 
which is really cute. I've got my little red sneaks on, and this is another Bondi tee. So the same t-shirt pattern that I was wearing earlier in pink, I threw on in red to go underneath. Much. I also considered a pink gingham check um, raglan little poof top, which would look super cute under it too. But I can see in the winter throwing a long sleeve t-shirt under this and wearing it. Look at how cute. Yep, definitely like this. This was pretty fast so sewed it in a morning, um, which is great. I had already traced the pattern off yesterday. Now for me, this is not one I could ever wear without a top under it. I could see maybe putting a bandeau under it, but um, it's just way too long. I have seen people wearing it sort of like just a dress without, but would not work for me. Please let me know if you've sewn this or if you plan on sewing it and the fabric that you chose. I love to hear about your projects and what you're working on. I'll see you next week for another fun video. Mm -hmm.